Welcome back to my little series on dire straits and in this episode we're going to look at this alchemy. Now I don't have a vinyl edition of this one. This is the uh, this is the DVD re-release which came out in 2010 and um, very nice presentation actually. It's got this uh, nice slip case with the uh, stencil cut arrows in the front there and uh, all the artwork on the outside cover of the um, of the inner case. They're all very nice. Uh, and this one includes the DVD and the album itself on across uh, two CDs. Um, now the album, as I say, was recorded in July 1983, which was on the Love of a Gold tour. And the Love of a Gold tour featured the same lineup. Um, largely that had recorded the Love of a Gold album. Um, the difference was that you had Terry Williams on drums instead of Pick Withers. Pick, as I mentioned in the previous episode, had left uh, shortly after the recording of, of the album and Terry replaced him. And Terry brought an, a new sort of dynamic to the band. He, he, he brought uh, an additional kind of energy uh, to the band, he he was um, he was often described as the sound of thunder, and, and that's quite an accurate description. He he really was a terrific drummer. His his flair, with with the fills, particularly on songs like Songs of Swing, was was really quite impressive. There were also a couple of uh, additional musicians who worked on this tour. Um, there was a chap called Mel Collins, uh, who played saxophone, and he appeared on certain songs over the course of the show. Uh, he had also played on the recorded version of Two Young Lovers, and he's on that same song on this on on, on Alchemy, and a uh, great saxophonist. Mark has worked with a succession of of great saxophonists over the years, from Mike Brecker to Mel Collins to Chris White um, to Graham Blevins on his most recent tour. Um, also, there are a couple of musicians who kind of operated behind the scenes, and you don't see very much of them. They, 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 they weren't really um, officially part of the band, uh, but there was a chap called uh, Tommy, uh, Tommy Mandel uh, who played ad additional keyboards uh, on, the, on this tour, and um, Duke de Court who played um, additional miscellaneous percussion. Now in terms of the sound of the Love of a Gold tour, it was in many ways a sort of a continuation of what they were doing on the On Location tour in that there was still that strong element of experimentation with the arrangements. Um, the main difference was that I think it was just a, a more refined kind of sound. And um, if you listen to some of the bootlegs from the On Location tour, which was uh, 80 into 81, uh, and you listen to Mark's guitar tone, it's a little bit kind of thin. It doesn't have a lot of body to it. But if you listen to uh, Alchemy, and I appreciate that Alchemy is a fully produced, um, uh, commercially released live album, but if, if you listen to Mark's guitar tone, it is much more rounded and has much more body to it. Um, so I think that there were a number of improvements in, in the way that, that Mark was amplifying his guitars on that tour. Also, of course, the band was always increasing in popularity. And so they were probably playing slightly larger venues. And, and so that's probably another another factor that contributed to the um, to the improvements and the refinement of the show. So let's just go through some of the songs on here. Um, it's not actually a complete show. Um, there are a number of songs that have been edited off. Uh, you can actually hear um, the beginning and the end of Industrial Disease between, between the end of uh, Once Upon a Time in the West and the beginning of Expresso Love. Um, and uh, I don't see why they couldn't have included that one really, but there we are. Um, but um, obviously you, you still had that extended version of Once Upon a Time in the West, which was terrific and a, gr a great start to the show, uh, very much an epic version of that song. Uh, of course, Romeo and Juliet, which had been a, a mega hit uh, just a few years previously. And at the end of Romeo and Juliet, normally Mark would swap to an electric guitar for the, um, for the solo. However, on this version, he swaps to a Spanish guitar, uh, specifically a Gibson Chet Atkins classical electric. Um, the reason being that Romeo and Juliet shares um, a chord sequence with Love Over Gold the title track from, from their current album at the time. And um, it's in the same key. So Romeo and Juliet seeks into Love of a Gold, and that works really well. I have to say, Romeo and Juliet 
the, the guitar solo in Romeo and Juliet works really well with a with a Spanish guitar, I have to say. And I've always loved um, particularly the vocal on Love of a Gold um, and its lyrics. It, it, it's a vocal that you can really dig into. I, I really enjoy singing that song. Um, of course, Private Investigations, which had been the big hit from Love of a Gold. And then, of course, you have that epic 10-11 um, minute version of Songs of Swing. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, that's a song where, where you really get to hear uh, Terry Williams' flair with some of those fills uh, between the lines on, on Sultans. It's, it's terrific. It's always uh, an astonishing performance whenever Mark plays that song live. And so that's the first CD. On to the second CD, we, we start with Two Young Lovers, just a good good fun bit of rock and roll, which, which was always um, a showcase for the band, the, the saxophonist and the guitarist in the band at the time, Mel Collins and Hal Linders, respectively. They always took solos on the on the live version of, the, of that song, and it was always good fun. Um, Tunnel of Love, which is a long song to begin with, is even longer than it was on the on the album. Uh, that's getting on for 15 minutes long. Terrific. And then we've got uh, Telegraph Road, which, of course, is... Um, has always been a huge highlight of, of live gigs down the years. Um, and the show ends with uh, the theme from Local Hero, Going Home, which has become quite a regular feature of the set list down the years and a, a very good way to, to, um, to end the show. It's always a very effective set closer. Dire Straits actually didn't release a huge amount of live material over the years, perhaps surprisingly. Um, the only other live album they released was On The Night, which was released in uh, 1993 and had been recorded on the On Every Street Tour, their final world tour the previous year. But generally speaking, Alchemy is seen as the stronger of the two. I think it's seen as a more characterful sort of recording, which doesn't explain why my favourite of the two is actually On The Night. Um, but there's no question about it, Alchemy is a classic live album, and it has you know, quite, uh, it does actually have quite legendary sort of status. Um, it, it's, it's a brilliant film and it's a really well recorded live album. And I have to say this particular edition of it, the, um, the live album and, and the DVD has been very, very well remastered and it's never sounded better than it, than it has on this particular edition. So if you can get your hands on this, do so. So the next album we'll look at next week, hopefully, will be, oh, Brothers in Arms. <laughs>